Thinking the thoughts of God. Is that even possible? You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of revelation being poured out to you. My passion is for you to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. You know, I've been going through some warfare today. I feel like the devil didn't want me to relay this message to you. So it's bound to be good. (laughs) Yep. Yep, there was an effectual door open to me as we were doing that uh, Bible study in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Then he talks about in the same verse about, and there's much opposition. So I think sometimes we need to perceive opposition and attacks in a godly framed mindset. We're going to be talking about that today. Now, first off, I want to talk about how I arrived at this topic. This morning, I woke up. I didn't sleep at all. My shoulders have been hurting me. I I didn't sleep much, let's put it that way. The alarm went off. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. And then I got bogged down in social media. And my arm hurt, and, you know, it's just all this stuff. And, And I'm like going, man, I don't have a podcast topic. Well, see, what I'm painting here is pretty much a mindset of a normal person. And you don't need the devil to mess with your head. Sometimes you can just do it all good all by yourself. You can just let the world encroach in upon you. And let's say you're standing on the precipice of depression, like it's a a cliff. All the devil needs to do is just do that little push with his finger Say something like, hast God said. And then you're off to the races. You're, you're just doing the will of the devil. And he just it's on autopilot. The carnal mind cannot fathom the things of God. So this morning, I was in that thought pattern. And, and, and I started going, you know what? I recognize this. <laughs> I recognize this. This is something that I need to overcome. And uh, so I was caught up in social media, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to have to break away. I'm going to have to start praying for a podcast. And here's one of the bad things about doing a daily podcast, and a good thing as well. The good thing is, I have to storm heaven for revelation every day, for podcast topics, every day. The bad thing is, is sometimes you can go, well... The podcast itself is the goal, and it should really be seeking God. You know, I like to go storm the gates of Revelation, you know, the gates of heaven for Revelation, talk to God, you know, and then get excited about something, and then share it with you. But if that's all, it's kind of like, if that's all you want, then your relationship's not right with God. So i got to do both. You see what I'm saying? Because your motivation of your heart, that's what God tries. So anyway, we were uh, talking in social media, and I'm about to to walk away. I'm about to go pray and seek the Lord for a podcast topic. And here comes this one last notice from Facebook. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to check that, that one last notice. And that one last notice was from Stephen Barrett. He tagged me in a post by Kevin Reardon. And Kevin happened to be talking about the same exact two scriptures, not one, but two, that we were talking about the day before in Christian Voxer. Now, Kevin's not in that, but he he wasn't in the Christian Voxer chat, so he didn't know about it. So Stephen and I, we've been talking about it, on Voxer. And we're like, 
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Something like that inspires you. It blasts all that stupid stinking thinking that I was just digging myself a pit with into just giving me an extra 100 miles on my tank of gas. When I say holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, there was Kevin, Stephen, and Conrad. Kevin's in Pennsylvania. Stephen's in Japan. I'm in Mississippi. We're three different people, three different geographic locations, looking at the same God from different perspectives. And we're like, wow, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. This is, this is obviously a God thing, and that inspires us to go further. So all it really takes is a touch from the Spirit of God to just blast through all that carnal thinking that I was going through. Um, that's really all it takes, man. I'm just going to let you know. That's, that's really all it takes is just a touch from the Spirit of God. And you go an extra thousand miles just on that one touch from the Lord. Well, let's take this a little bit further because i got a podcast. Uh, <laughs> let's say that we're, we're doing this mindset of this negativity and we're going down the street and then we look up and then there's somebody 300 feet in front of us to the right. And God kind of lights them up for you. He draws your attention to that person that's 300 feet and you're going to run into them in the next minute or so. The problem is you got a minute to think about it. And that's the problem. You start thinking, well, uh, what if, what if they reject me? You know, what, what if, what if you get all these what ifs and that's the problem. God lit them up. Stephen Bear from Holy Fire Japan, he says things like this. You know, you, you go up to the batter box. The batter's box is the Great Commission. It says, okay, you're about to swing at bat. God's going to give you, you know, when he, whenever you teach a little kid, <laughs> he gives you something easy to hit. <laughs> you know, he doesn't throw a fastball at 150,000 miles an hour. He gives you something easy to hit. Well, the idea is he just wants you to swing, right? So the idea is to follow the Spirit and not think your own thoughts. And the reason I'm saying this, not think your own thoughts, we all know that passage that says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Well, guess what? Our thoughts got us into some really bad situations. Don't you agree? So why don't we trade our way of thinking for the way God thinks about situations? And Stephen came up with another analogy as well. He was talking about, I'm going to call it the Christian trapeze artist. And, you know, as we're going throughout life, we're swinging on our own swing. And there's this point where God will highlight someone else to you. That's the other trapeze person. And there's this point where you need to get yourself out of your own environment, get yourself out of your own stinking thinking, let go of all that, fly through the air, and insert yourself as a Christian variable in their environment. Okay? And then it's all about them. You're ministering to them. At that point, there's something that pretty much always happens. If you're following the Spirit, the anointing increases. You'll start getting stuff to say for that person that you wouldn't have thought of on your own. The Lord says things like, open your mouth and I will fill it. Jesus says, take no thought for what you're going to say in that hour, because it's not going to be you speaking, it will be the Holy Spirit speaking through you. It's that type of a thing, but that's not going to happen if you're not in that situation that God wants you to be in, right? So you got to start swinging at the ball. And God has a way of meeting you at your faith. He won't give you something terribly scary right off the bat. That's what I've noticed. There's always a way of escape, <laughs> but he does give you the powder puff stuff in the beginning. Another couple of examples I'm going to think about, you know, we have these self-limiting, self-imposed thought patterns, which the Holy Spirit helps us break through. And there's this guy about 20 years ago, I forget his name, but I kind of remember what he said and what he said stuck with me. He was, you know, doing that tra trapeze thing or he was in the batter's box type thing. 
You know, Scripture says, get in the batter's box. That's the Great Commission. Make disciples. It means go up to the plate. Go work the field. You know, go get in position. And he was in position, and there was a sick person that was asking him for prayer for like the first time or something. And uh, he was the guy uh, preaching, but he really hadn't really prayed for people that much, I guess. I don't remember the, the whole back story. But he said, you know, I didn't know what to do, so I just pretended I was Benny Hinn. And I thought that was funny, and you probably, I don't know what you think about Benny Hinn. It doesn't really matter, but this is what his faith was at the time. He just pretended that he was that man, and he started assuming the words that Benny Hinn would say. He said, I just did what I saw Benny Hinn do. Jesus says, I only do what I see the Father do. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So we need mentors, right? In whatever vein of our call that we're, we're operating in, we need a mentor. And uh, so as we imitate Paul, we get Paul results because Paul got Jesus results. Disciples make disciples make disciples. So another thing about pretending he was Benny Hinn, if he's going to really do that, then he has to pretend he has the faith of Benny Hinn, right? I'm talking about not just your physiology. I'm talking about what's going on in your noggin. <laughs> he has to start thinking like that. Well, that makes me think of think of God's thoughts. How about this? Let's go over another couple of examples that I can think of really quick. Let's say the demoniac from the Gatherings. This is the first time you've ever encountered this situation. There is this crazy man running at you at 100 miles an hour. He's got broken chains dangling from his arms and his feet, and he's naked. I mean, he is just blowing every... You have no way to resort. You have no safety fallback, right? So if you start thinking about your thoughts, your thoughts are probably going to be turn and run. Right? Forget everything and run. Fear. But Jesus doesn't. He th- he says, I only do what I see the Father do. And I only say those things he tells me to say. So, he's speaking not his own words. He, I mean, God says in Isaiah 55 or 58 or something, that fasting passage, he goes, you know, you guys are fasting for strife and for debate, but I want you to, you know, don't speak your own words. Don't think your own thoughts. We need to think the thoughts of God. We need to speak the words of God. Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but in it you shall meditate day and night, and with it you will have good success. So if we think God's thoughts, and if we speak God's words, we will have good success. So that's what Jesus was employing when the demoniac from the Gadarenes was running towards him. So let's go back to David now. Now, David, at one point, he was about to be stoned by all the people uh, that were following him. And uh, if you remember, all of the wives were taken captive by an enemy troop or something. And I'm trying to remember where the scripture is, but it's, uh, it's there. He says he strengthened himself in the Lord is God. So David, in this terrible situation, instead of getting depressed and adopting, adopting a depressing mindset, he began to encourage himself in the Lord his God. He started thinking about what the Lord thinks about David, right? Now, let's go back in history a little bit. David, this young boy that even his own family rejected him, they thought there's no way he could be king. They wouldn't even allow him to come to the table. But while he was being rejected by his family, the Lord had taught him to kill a lion and a bear. So, there's thousands or maybe millions of people, I don't remember how many people were there, but they all saw, they were all participating in the same scenario, and they had a different perspective than David had. If you remember, Goliath was a giant. He was scary. He was, you know, a mountain above everybody else. All the children of Israel were looking at Goliath, and they were afraid. But remember, David, the person that was rejected by his own family, spent time with God. And he knew that the Lord had delivered him from the bear, had delivered him from the lion, and then he went up against 
this uncircumcised Philistine. And what did he do? He spoke the words of God. He spoke the words of his covenant. And then he said, and then he spoke forth, I'm going to cut off your head. Amen? So he did not think the thoughts that everybody else was thinking. He thought the thoughts of the Lord. All right? And I'm going to take you to another example, and then we'll end the podcast, I guess. Um, when I was in entertainment, you know, I, I went to Hollywood as a kid, and I t- tried the acting and music thing. didn't work out too well. But one of the things I used to struggle with was stage fright, right? Stage fright was a big deal. I mean, it makes you want to throw up. <laughs> you know, it's a big deal. So I, I wanted to be in entertainment. And so I started asking people that have conquered stage fright. I'm like, how do you, how do you conquer this? And uh, they told me. But here's one thing that I learned is many people like the Philistines, uh, well, the, the children of Israel were looking at the giant. They can all be seeing the same thing, but how they perceive the situation is important. Stage fright, when it comes up upon you, your mind kind of starts spinning a little bit. You start perspiring. Your heart is beating faster. You get these butterflies in your stomach. I mean, you really get these serious butterflies. You may even want to throw up. So most people will call that stage fright, and they won't want to act. They won't want to perform. However, the people that conquer it, they take those same cues, the butterflies in the stomach, the rapid heartbeat, the perspiration on the forehead, and they go, I'm ready now. They reframe the way they think. So we can do this as Christians. We can start adopting the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. You know, and this is scriptural too. Every time something comes in and exalts itself against the knowledge of God, of what we know of God, we need to cast down those vain imaginations, right? Right? And we do that with the Word of God. The sword of spirit is the Word of God. So when these negative things come into your life, and they they happen, I understand it, I get it, I had that problem this morning. We need to adopt the mindset of Christ and cast it down in Jesus' name. God bless you. Remember to think God thoughts. If this has touched you, please share this with your friends and family on social media. Till we meet again, dig deeper. And go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.